What is up my friend, this is Jason. It has been a long time since I turned this camera on and talked to it. So if I'm a little bit rusty, it's been like a year and a half. I got sick, lost like 20 pounds. My pancreas took a giant shit. Not technically, but it did kind of revolt against me. I got this bad boy installed. Now I'm back to abnormal. We'll have to have that conversation another time because that's kind of a deep one, a uh, little bit of a life changer, but eh, no big deal. But today I want to talk to you about a conversation I was having with my barber the other day. He asked me what I'm up to and I was like, oh, I finally just bought a ticket over to Portugal. He's like, oh really, how long? And I said, like, three months. And he's just like, well, what? And he's like, he's like, oh, you ever been there? No. He's like, well, how are you going to get around? You going to get a rental car or something like that? I was like, no, so I'll just take public transit and walk around and you know, things like that. And he gave me this look like, and that's when it occurred to me that a lot of Americans have this weird spatial recognition or lack of recognition or lack of understanding about the differences between the United States and Europe. As far as transportation, as far as getting around, it's, it's kind of something you really got to get your head around and it's easier to do that if you actually travel and go do it. But this conversation is about getting your head around it, whether you've traveled to Europe or not, or maybe you popped over there for one country or two countries. All right. I'm, I'm getting off the rails. You rein it back in. Here's the thing. When you look at the United States from coast to coast, east coast to west coast, and you look at that as the crow flies, you're looking at about 2,700 miles east to west, west to east, whichever way you're looking. And when you look at Europe, you're looking at about 2,300 miles. Obviously, depending on where you're going, east to west, we're generalizing here. So if you drove across the US, you're gonna experience 10 or 15 different states. You drive across Europe, you're gonna experience 10, maybe 12, maybe 15 different countries. So for instance, look at the size of Portugal. Portugal is 100 times smaller than the United States. Look at Montenegro. The US is 700 times bigger than Montenegro. So here's the thing, when you travel across the US, you go from state to state to state to state to state to state to state, to state and you deal with the same currency, you deal with the same language, you get some some variations in the drawls or the, the accents in these different places. But when you're crossing the US, culturally, it's just not very different. Take that same trip across Europe and if you experience 10 different countries, there's a good chance that you're experiencing 10 different languages. There's a good chance you're experiencing five to 10 different currencies. Even with some of the smallest countries, Luxembourg compared to the US, the US is 3,800 times larger than Luxembourg. And yes, they actually speak Luxembourgish in Luxembourg. Tiny, tiny country. They speak German, they speak French, they speak a couple of different languages, but like 75% of the country speaks Luxembourgish. Okay, so imagine you live in Ohio and you're like, I'm gonna go over to Pennsylvania for all. I'm gonna go to Pittsburgh and check out Pittsburgh and, and tool around and see what's going on. I know, my Browns fans are like, nope, not going. All right, Pittsburgh's supposed to be really cool. Give them a break. All right, cool, get a bus, you know, whatever cost that is here in the States, go over to Pittsburgh, look around. But it's just another American city with, a, with American attractions. Uh, it's a steel city, a lot of things that you know. Now imagine if you're over in Europe and you're like, you know, I'm chilling out in Hungary, I'm gonna pop up to Austria for a bit, or I'm gonna head up to Slovakia, and you, you, you jump on a two or three hour bus, and all of a sudden you're in a different country with different food and different customs and different everything. There's also a huge difference in the cost of getting around in Europe because, you know, you think about things like the Schengen Zone. Uh, if you don't know what the Schengen Zone is, it's a, it's a group of countries where they've removed the difficulty from traveling through the border. So you get into the, the, the Schengen Zone, you jump from, from two or three or four countries that are in the Schengen Zone back and forth. You don't really have to deal with the passport issues, all of these travel issues that we have to deal with whenever we go into one country or another. So Europe is has done this so that tourism can prosper over there and people will move from country to country a lot more and those tourism dollars pass you know, easily. So the existence of trains over in Europe and bus routes from country to country, it's prolific compared to what we have here in the United States. Yeah, we have Amtrak and we have some trains and we have some long distance trains, but there's just a lot more opportunities in Europe to take a really cheap bus or train and be in another country in a couple of hours. So for instance, my last trip over to Europe, I flew into Budapest, I took like a, cheap bus up to Vienna, Austria. And then from there I went another cheap bus to Prague, Czech Republic, took a train to Munich, Germany, train to Paris, France, and all of that 
about a thousand miles worth of travel cost me less than a hundred bucks. And that was on the fly. That was, hey, I'm gonna buy a ticket for two days from now. That wasn't, I'm gonna plan this two or three months ahead of time or two or three weeks ahead of time. So you're probably wondering, okay, that's, that's a mind shift. How do I go about heading over to Portugal for three months when having never been there and just kind of winging it? Essentially, I do a little bit of research. I know there's a lot of bloggers and vloggers and, and travelers that have been there, so look at a little bit of research. And then I say, okay, how much of a plan do I want? Sometimes a lack of a plan is a good thing and just having backup plans is kind of the way to go. So one of the ways that I research how to get around is I'll pull up a website called Rome to Rio and that's kind of where I'll start a lot and, and I'll just put in a couple destinations over in Europe and see how much it costs generally for a train or a bus or a plane and usually it's like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, not a big deal. So therefore I'm just not worried about it. I know that there's plenty of opportunities for me to get from place to place, city to city, um, even island hop and things like that to where it's not gonna break my budget. I just need to know that much. And I know that there's a lot of tickets and I'm not gonna have any issues getting around. I'll also look to see if there's ride shares and things like Uber. I will look at Flixbus or Google Flights just to get an idea of what the opportunities are whenever I'm in these other countries, knowing that I have these backup plans or these outs and there's plenty of options. There are a lot of countries where that's not the case. You're not gonna be able to use an Uber because the, the local government and the local taxi drivers haven't adopted that yet and you have to take that into consideration. Well, when traveling around Europe, um, for the most part, you're gonna have a lot of options and they're gonna be fairly inexpensive. This particular trip to Portugal, I am flying into Porto, which is on the north of Portugal and I'm flying out of Lisbon. I looked at round trips to one city. I looked at you know flying into one city and flying out of another city. I looked at a lot of different variations. If I'm gonna explore the entire country of Portugal, I don't care where I go in or where I come out of, just so that A, it's the cheapest for me to get there. I'm gonna have a lot of options and you know, that was really the most important thing to me. Sometimes you gotta buy the ticket and you will figure out the rest from there. All right, appreciate you. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, share it with a friend, share it with somebody that you wanna to travel to Europe with and be like, look at this, my mind just exploded. There's so many of these options that we don't quite get over here in the US. Um, if you don't like this video, what are you still doing here? We'll uh, talk about this bad boy next time. I'm gonna see how much of a show this actually is. Look at this. It's all cleaned up in here. Look at this. All right, that's it for me today. I'm out of here. Peace.